Ryan Daguin, you're the owner of D'Artagnan. Tell us briefly what D'Artagnan does. Uh, we do uh, good food and uh, we distribute on the East Coast. We have uh, the whole corridor on North East. And today we're discussing together the foie gras ban that's going to happen in California. So briefly, what is the law that's going to happen July 2012? Uh, there is a law that passed seven years ago that's going to be applied in July and um, that forbids um, restaurants, consumers, retail stores, anybody to buy foie gras, uh, any farmers to produce foie gras, any transporters to transport foie gras in uh, California starting July 1. Like they tried to do in Chicago some years ago and they eventually failed, we overturned the, the, the ban because at the end of the day, when people do their homework, the people who voted for that ban did not understand that there is nothing, nothing stressful, nothing cruel about raising ducks for foie gras. So that's the thing they're saying. So just to make it clear, that you will be impossible to consume to eat foie gras in California starting July 1st, 2012, right? Right. And the, so the groups that are against that are claiming that the duck are force fed and it's stressful for them, right? And then you have... Yeah, they are force fed, but they do that naturally in the wild. You know, when they are wild, the ducks and the geese, they force feed themselves before migration. And that's that big... Yeah, it's a natural, it's a, the, it's a natural the, the process. It's a beautiful, beautiful, delicious thing that the Egyptians found out 2,000 years ago. And since then... Oh, more than 2,000 years ago. They, they, have, they found like 4,000 4, years yes, ago. And the Romans, yes. you do it. So it's a natural process that the duck and the goose, before they migrate, they force feed themselves so they can do this as actual flight. Yes, yes, and all the farmers do is to reproduce the same, the same thing, but in a domestic manner and all year long, instead of just during those two times, the migration going uh, north in, uh, and, and going south, you know, in, in the fall and in the spring. And you've done some research um, that to prove that it's not stressful for the duck and goose, is that they, those animals have no gag reflex. You know, no gag reflex, an insensitive esophagus, that natural propensity to force themselves. They are not stressed when you uh, when you feed them. They actually uh, welcome the feed. When they get, uh, they actually get the stress is a, as any animal is a transportation in the killing part, which is the same with the beef and the chicken. Which we've seen those images of chicken and those beef. Those are really awful. What you? This is not natural. The way they raise the cattle and the way they the take care of the chicken, yeah, right? The five farmers uh, who uh, raise ducks for foie gras in North America are artisan farmers, are small farmers. It has nothing to do with factory farming. Um, of the beef that goes into uh, all our uh, hamburgers in America. So you're trying with some groups of restaurateurs and other people to reverse that ban, first of all because it's not stressful to, uh, uh, to those animals, and second of all, or put it the way you want, it, it's a question of freedom. If you don't want foie gras, then don't eat it, but don't force me to not be able to eat it, right? It's Absolutely. A, it's a, it's a matter of free country. It's a matter of principle, if right? You don't like foie gras, don't eat it. But don't prevent me from eating what I would like to eat. Don't prevent the chefs from cooking what they want to cook. This is America. This is a country of freedom, and and we are not uh, trespassing any outlaw. You know, this is this is absolutely fine, legal, and and uh, humane to raise ducks for uh, for foie gras. And so uh, the people of California are going to end up like the people in Chicago, where there was this big war, and they ended up when they finally found out that, hey, it's not stressful, they reverse the ban. Well, let's see what happens. Thank you. Thanks. Michael, you know, you're a very famous person in the foie gras world because you're the uh, founder of Hudson Valley foie gras, right? Yeah. So, uh, there's something going on in California with the ban in July 1st, 2012. What, what, are your take, what is your take or your takes on this? Well, I think there's so much misinformation and, and very and misunderstanding about how foie gras is produced. And I think that the law passed in California with a lot of ignorance. Um, we're hopeful that as people understand how foie gras is produced and the lack of stress and the fact that feeding the ducks in a certain manner does not cause any harm or damage or stress levels, that people will start understanding that the law should not have been passed in the first place. Hopefully there will be a grassroots effort by local chefs who understand how foie gras is produced, who visited foie gras farms, who will take it onto their legislatures and try to have this law uh, banned or, or changed or reversed. Yeah. Um, as people understand, the ducks have a calcified esophagus. 
that they gorge prior to migration twice a year, that they swallow fish whole and digest in the crop, that the anatomy of a duck is very different than the anatomy of a human being in the sense that the esophagus is calcified, that it's not flexible, unlike a human, and the duck swallow fish and other foods whole and then digest it. If people understand that and the ducks eat naturally in this manner, they will hopefully be able to convey that to their clients, to the legislatures, and that the law will be reversed. Um, I assume that if it doesn't get reversed, certain chefs will carry the flag and go out ahead and still put food on their menus and get challenged legally and then it might go into a court battle if, if it doesn't get reversed prior. But um, unfortunately, as foie gras connotates fat liver, two French words, uh, a food that's deemed to be the food of the wealthy, uh, misunderstanding as to how ducks are produced, it was a very easy legislation to pass. Hopefully, as more information comes across, and people really understand it, we will have a leg to stand on as far as reversing it. Okay, we'll see. Thank you. Thank you. So, Anna, are you involved with Sonoma Foie Gras? Yes. Which, which is the only producer of Foie Gras in California? That is correct. And we're here talking because in July 1st, 2012, there will be a ban in Foie Gras in California. That means no more Foie Gras buying, transportation, purchasing. Uh, in California, so no restaurant no production as well. And production, and so I mean, no restaurant can serve foie gras. So you can't buy foie gras in, uh, in officially in California. In the state of California. California. So, what is your take on that? I believe that uh, just like in Chicago, the chefs need to get organized. They need to come forth and uh, begin to form an organization, such as a California Chefs for Choice, for example and support this yeah. cause and le have a leadership I mean, you want to representation reverse, to, reverse, to reverse to reverse, yes. to reverse uh, the ban. The way that uh, in Chicago it was so successful how they lifted that ban by having the chefs get organized. And so we are calling now to all the chefs in California. Uh, we have had some support already. We have some people that are coming together and uh, a lot of foie gras dinners are now being organized across California to um, help lift this ban. So the easiest way I understand to lift the ban is to go to the chef, because even if you're a private person in your house and you want to do a, a private event, you're not, you can't even serve foie gras anymore because you're not able to buy it, right? That is correct. Because you, you can't buy it because you can't even transport it. Within California. Within California, yeah. which is taking away the rights of us human beings to choose what we would like to eat, as well as for the chefs, like Ariane said earlier, uh, it reduces the palette of the colors of the kinds of foods that they can serve, which we believe that is is, is incorrect. Uh, well, so let's see what happens, and hopefully those chefs are going to jump on the bandwagon. Yes, thank that's you. That's what we're hoping for. Thank you. Thank you.